All right, so welcome to our class today. So uh, today we will talk about the ratios that really matter. Ayan. So uh, this takes off from uh, um, you know and the starting point of our investment in the stock market, diba? So uh, today we'll talk about ratios, no? Siyempre, uh, we know already where to look for those ratios, but then the thing is, uh, you know, uh, what's the starting point? How do I know whether a, a company is good to buy or not? So at least we should know this first of all, because uh, yun yung una natin dapat talaga dating that's a stocks, no? It's companies. Eh, kailangan alam natin whether it's good to buy, no? The indicators that really matter, yeah, and the ratios that really matter. Okay, so we have only 21 slides. Oops, tika, move ko akin dito. So we have, first of all, review financial statements, balance sheet. Of course, uh, supposed to be, well, dapat uh, alam nyo na to, di ba? Kasi... <laughs> Okay, so dapat alam nyo na to, no? Review financial statements. So we have the balance sheet, uh, you know, uh, financial position, no? So we have assets. So lahat naman to, uh, ano natin, no? alam na natin. No? We have cash, land, building improvements. All of this, the given, no? Example naman to. And then we have liabilities and capital, funds payable, uh, go to liabilities. And then, of course, kailangan balance yung dalawang yan, right? And then we also have the income statement, okay? So we have sales or revenues, then we have the cost of sales, diba? Oops, I'm going to say you dito, And then we have the gross profit, 1.4 million. And then we have other income investments, and then the income of 1.4. And then we have the expenses on the left side, on the right side, which, uh, you know, salaries and wages, benefits, Ang tawag dito, mga operating expense, no? uh, administrative expenses. Uh, hindi naman tayo will not deal into the, uh, we're not uh, doing uh, financial statements here, but uh, uh, how it aligns to uh, the analysis of the stock market. So total expenses for depreciation, 1 million 2,000. So inad lang yun. No? And then we have the depreciation expense. Uh, yun, no? Uh, EBIT da yun, no? And then EBIT, you know, uh, earnings for income taxes, 238,000. We'll just uh, subtract, di ba, yung income minus all of this, which is the total expenses for depreciation and then the depreciation expenses. Then we have 338,000. And then we have the taxes, uh, 238,000. Uh, so we have 238,000 profit. Of course, hindi ito totoo sa, in terms of yung mga percentage ng mga taxes, whatever, no? Uh, it's just a uh, parang uh, example lang, right? Uh, yun. So, ang first natin na indicator is the gross uh, profit margin or the margins. So, dito, of course, the greater, the higher, the better. Ang ibig sabihin lang nito, yeah, we have the sales and the cost of sales. So, divide malay yung profit, di ba? Gross profit sa uh, sales. Uh, we have the gross profit margin or sometimes the gross margin. So that means 58%. Now, ito, syempre, the higher the better. And uh, of course, you will have to compare among the, you know, the similar companies in an industry. Maybe yung GPM of 58% seems to be high. But when you compare it, for example, with the software company, no, uh, baka hindi. No? Kasi may mga software companies na talagang sobrang taas talaga ng, ng kanilang uh, profit margin, no? So, well, uh, it really depends on uh, your industry and the kind of products that you're producing. So, it's not correct to say na, you know, uh, may absolute number na maganda rito. Of course, relatively speaking, the higher the better. I mean, it's talagang the higher the better, no? Or the, the larger it is, the better. But uh, you have to be slow in judging companies uh, across all industries. That's what I'm saying, okay? So you have to compare uh, similar industries. And then, of course, we have the net profit margin. Siyempre, ito yung bottom line talaga, no? To yung final profit, kanina to, no? Napakita na naman natin to. Divided by the total sales, which is 9.92% NPM. So that means, so bawat 100 pesos, you're getting 9 pesos, no? 9% NPM, right? 
And then we have the ROA. Again, pareho na yung kanina. Ha? Balik ko lang. No? So again, compare it to uh, similar industries para hindi kayo nahihirapan. I mean, para hindi kayo judgmental. Ayan. Okay? So we have also the return on assets. ROA no? indicates how profitable a company is relative to its total assets. So ROA gives an idea as to how efficient management is at using its assets. Okay, to generate earnings. Dito, uh, again, wala naman tong uh, mandatory or anything that's like standard or something. But uh, if you look at Warren Buffett, the way he looks at it, dapat daw ang mga bank o banks no, should be able to return about 1.5% of its asset. No? Uh, and uh, hindi ko na yun, hindi na direct question eh. So talagang ginagawa ko ng basihan yun. Well, uh it depends on a lot of other things as well no yung mga reserve requirement non performing uh, loan uh, metrics yung mga requirement additional ng central bank of sa atin bank of central ng pilipinas of course no but uh siguro yes uh, the most ito return on asset the higher the better and uh, i would also look at 1.5% as uh, my uh, go to no kailangan at least 1.5% all the, by the way uh, in the past years I think mga two years ago, uh, nung tinignan ko yung uh, ROA na yan, parang security bank lang ang naka, naka-fulfill ng ROA na 1.5%. So again, maaring unfair tayo sa ibang banko that way. no? Kasi baka mamaya nga, sobrang taas kasi ng asset ng ibang banko like universal banks for that matter are also operating other institutions as well no? na heavy on uh, assets and machineries like Banko de Oro, sobrang taas ng asset niyan eh. Uh, may SNDC pa siyang minemaintain, no? Uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, um, kailangan talaga siyang, you know, uh, mag-generate ng, uh, kumbaga malaki yung asset base niya. So, hindi mo rin masasabi, no, na talagang, uh, uh, baka kasi it, be, it is because of the, uh, the size of the company. Yan. Okay, so we have also, yan, ito yung example niya, no? This example natin, 0.98, and yung mga bank ko, so 0.98%, maybe not that high. Uh, yeah, but uh, if this is a bank, then this is not that high. It, it is called the profitability ratios. All right, so we have uh, return on equity. Again, kanina, ROE, the higher the better. ROE, the higher the better pa rin. Uh, even Benjamin Graham, the, the, the mentor, teacher of uh, Warren Buffett, looks at around 16%, something like that. No? If you look at 16%, no? so tinanang natin, improve na nga rin natin yan because I've been looking at, uh, at that. I think uh, there's a reason for the 16%, and I think it's like doubling the doubling rate. No? So 1.16 raised to the 5. Oh, wala akong scientific calculator, so I have to multiply uh you know uh five times so yeah correct so 1.16 raised to five is about 2.1 so i think kaya 16 percent yung ni ni uh ni benjamin graham and warren buffett is that five years kasi yung difference on the long company so like if you have, are looking at five-year data and the first value doubled you know doubled in 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 its uh, value at the first amount now doubled after five years, then that means it produced at least 16% ROE. So, kaya hindi mo na kailangan kumpitin. Basta nag-doble yun with the five. Halimbawa, uh, about 2021 ngayon, no? uh, matatapos na yung 2021, December, right? So, 2016. So, kung noong 2016, tinignan mo yung value niya, ang kanyang uh, income, net, net uh, income is 10 million. All right? And then, nung 2021, ang net income niya is above 20 million. That means na double siya. So, it's above 16%. So, sa kanila, okay na yun. Hindi mo na kailangan compete in. How many percent? Kasi the, the fact that it doubled, it's already in your uh, horizon of investment uh, needs. No? So, yeah. So, I don't, in this case, no, uh, ito kasi year per year. No? But uh, you have to look at the, uh, ano kasi, the total, no? Uh, ito, yung net profit niya, di divide mo sa total equity. So in this case, 10%. ROE of 10%, maybe not that high. Again, uh, I'm not here to judge. Maybe ROE for this industry is high. But uh, if you will look at uh, the Warren Buffett uh, indicator, hindi siya papasa. No? Uh, pero may mga companies talaga pumapasa dyan. Ha? Uh, 
by the way no but uh, earnings per share kasi yung final eh yung final net income at tinitingnan dito hindi naman revenue so pwede rin namang revenue kasi yun naman ang basihan no ng sales nat ng ating income doon naman nagagaling yung income natin no but uh, if you will look at the net income medyo punishing to no pag uh, hindi ka talaga nagdoble in you know five years then wala hindi po pwede right Okay, so again, ano yun ha? Uh, profitability ratio siya. ROA, ROE, ROI, di ba? And then we have the solvency ratios. For me, it's one of my most favorite indicators. No? Bakit, Sir George? Kasi no araw, no 1990s, that was the time when I was in the bank, I looked at the indicators that really matter and uh, did an analysis of the stocks. Uh, hindi naman lahat. Parang yung nasa composite index lang. And what I realize is that yung mababa ang debt to equity, siya yung tumaas ng todo. No? So, ibig sabihin, the higher your debt to equity, the lower your returns will be. even And even to the point of being negative yung return or bumababa yung presyo ng stock. So, ibig sabihin, isa sa mga indicators talaga that matter is that the company should have lower debt to equity. It seems plain, right? Kasi if a company has so much debt, siyempre babayaran niya muna yon. And in fact, yung interest rate pa lang nun, napaparusahan na siya. So ano po ba ang dapat na level ng debt ng company? No, eh, According to uh, my, uh, you know, sa analysis na ginagawa natin, ay uh, dapat less than 50%. No? So, kasi pag na, itong 8.85% na to, the debt to equity, napakaliit nito. Total liabilities lang naman, total divided by the total equity. Uh, maliit yung 8.85%. So it, in fact, you, are even, you may even think of uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, utilizing your, uh, your debt some more para mag-expand yung company, right? Pero debt to equity of 8% is halos wala yan. No? Kayang-kaya niyang bayaran yan, in fact, no? Pero there's a, there's a good point in lower in lower debt to equity. Siyempre, kayang-kaya niya yung cash niya. Sa kanya talaga yan. Hindi niya yan kailangan ni isulit sa banko. Right? Even if you get hit by a lower sales, then you don't need to worry because you don't have a lot of debt. No? But there are companies with high, uh, high enough debt to equity levels. Yun may problema yun. Kasi... If, for example, your debt level is about 60%, imagine kung nagkaroon ka ng problema, right? Hindi ka makaka... Saan ka mahihiram? Masyado na mataas ang interest rate. At saka nahihirapan ka na talaga niyan. Kailangan mo na niyan na magkaroon ng influx of new investment. Yan. Kaya ito dapat less than 50%. So this is a measure of solvency. Of course, meron pang ibang mga measures of solvency. No? Like for example, debt to asset, meron pang mga current ratio, quick ratio, Alam niyo na naman yan. So, harapin niyo na lang no? sa so, Investopedia, paano mag-compute niyan. Dito sa atin, debt to assets will be do. Kasi kaya natin ginagamit ito. Ito kasi yung automatic na hindi dyan kagad. No? Pag-compute mo lang yung liabilities, i-divide mo sa total asset. Tapos, di ba? Almost, uh, you know, this, in this case, 8% na naman. Again, lower sana by 50%. So, in reminders lang, you know, in profit margins, the higher the margins, the better. Siyempre, profitability yon. Uh, ay margin yun. No? And profitability naman, again, uh, profitability kasi, the higher the percentage, the better. Insolvency, natural. Gusto natin na konti ang utang mo, the lower the debt to asset or debt to equity level, the better. And for banks, as I said, we follow a standard of at least greater than 1.5% on return on assets. And in this case, the higher, the better. Okay? Yan ang mga reminders lang natin. So we have, of course, the three common value indicators or yung mga price ratios. Price ratios. Noong araw ito, kinukupit ko pa talaga to manually. But now, in your day and age, you don't need to compute them because it's already available. Although, uh, I must warn you that iba-ibang site, iba-iba din naman ang uh, value in, ang price in, uh, val, price ratios. No? Kaya nga kung talagang when, when in doubt, then you have to compute for yourself. Kasi iba ang iba nakatingin sa past, no? which is based on the past year. Halimbawa, 2021 ngayon, na ikukumpare niya sa 2020 end of year. Meron naman, ikukumpare niya sa trailing 12 months na earnings. 
So maganda yun, no? trailing 12 months kasi talagang current. No? Meron naman forward PE. Ano yung gina-expect nila na maging earnings at the end of the year? Remember, yung price earnings kasi is the price of the company today plus the, divided by the earnings of the company. So paano mo kunin yung earnings? So halimbawa, ang pinaka last na A na annual financial statement, syempre 2020. O, oh, eh di doon nakabase ang iyong price earnings, di ba? Kaya depende kung ano ang basihan ng uh, ng website na tinitinan mo. So iba-iba yan. Ang PSE iba, feasibility iba. Minsan yung call financial naglalabas, iba din. Iba din naman sa Investagram, iba sa Bloomberg. So kung gusto mo, kumpitin mo talaga siya. Saka minsan kasi hindi updated yung mga, ano, yung mga site na yun, no? Kung gusto mo talaga malaman, eh, ditingnan mo yung pinaka-latest niya at saka yung mga past uh, 12 months, as I said, or last four quarters, if you must look at it that way. And then yun, kumpitin mo talaga siya. Kaso nga lang, medyo pag ginawa mo yan sa lahat ng stocks, hindi mo kayang gawin yan. So maybe mamili ka na lang ng talagang reliable na, na site and then yun na lang ang gamitin mo. No? Okay, so siyempre, first of all, is the price earnings. I mentioned this already to you. The current share price compared to the per share earnings. Whenever we say the company is cheap, no, mas mura, we are looking at any of the three indicators here. First of all, we have the price earnings. Yan ang pinaka most looked at indicators. So when I say it's cheap, I was referring, I'm always referring to the price earnings ratio. Okay, yun yung price earnings. Sandaan ninyo, ha? pag cheap, price earn cheap, o kaya mahal naman, price earnings ang pinag-uusapan doon. Kasi nga, as I said, pag binaligtad mo yung price earnings, nagigis siyang earnings over price. So meaning, yun yung yield rate. Kaya siya cheap. Ibig sabihin nun, at this price, kaya mong kumuha ng earnings na ganito. Kaya, di ba, the higher, ito, the lower, the better to. Again, yan yan, no? market price per share, Earnings per share. Ano, diba? Pwede rin namang uh, yung price sa market divided by the uh, earnings per share. Puro per share. So in this case, example to, luma na to example na to, no? the price of Ayala Corporation plus the price earnings at that point in time. Diba? So yun, divide mo lang yung price over the EPS. Okay, as I said, Ah, uh, ito galing to sa Bloomberg eh. Pero hindi wag wag niyo nang i-attempt competing kasi may, may ibibigay na, binibigay naman eh. So nando doon na yon. So alamin niyo lang kung ito ba trailing 12 months ba to? TTM ang nakalagay, trailing 12 months. Or is it forward ratios, no? Uh, depende kasi. Ayan. So ayan, example again, so example lang to naman ng SM Prime Holdings no. So ayan example ng price earnings. Tapos another one is the price to book. Yung price to book, uh, yung price to book is kung compare mo yung price ng stock versus yung book value niya. Siyempre, per share din yun. No? Ito yung book value, I, I would say this is the accounting value. No? Kapag inano mo yung stock, no? uh, niliquidate mo yung company, yun yung value niya. Uh, so anong example niya? Halimbawa, no? Uh, Siyempre, may mga asset yung company, right? Halimbawa, may computer yan, may table, may equipment yan. Ang book value, parang lumalabas, ang, ang book value niya is ano ang value nung, comp nung computer niya dun sa kanyang uh, balance sheet. Ganon, no? Ngayon, pag tinignan mo yun, di ba, parang lumalabas, hindi naman parang, oops, teka, Pag ang price to book niya is 1, ang ibig sabihin, kung ang value sa book niya ay 25,000 yung, yung kanyang laptop o 30,000, parang binibili mo siya at 30,000 din. Pero pag ang book value niya ay, ang PB, PB niya is less than 1. Kaya yun ang sinasabi natin ng mga cigarette butt, cigarette butt technique. Ayan, cigarette butt technique ni Benjamin Graham. O kaya yung tinatawag natin na fire sale tendency. Parang meron kang fire sale uh, thinking. Ang ibig sabihin nun, bibili ka ng company o ng stock na mababa ang PB sa 1. Okay? 
Alam mo, ang mga price to book ng companies, example, na ang, ang Google, ang price to book ng Google, malabas mga 6, no? Ganun. Example, ah, titin ako ngayon as, as it is now. Ang financials ng, ang price to book ngayon ng Meralco ay 4, 4 times. Hmm. Hindi mo sasabing mahal yan. Kasi Meralco yun eh, di ba? Mga poste, mga ganyan. I'm sure nag-depreciate na yung value niyan, pero... Hindi ganoon ang pag-compute niyan kasi nagde-generate pa rin 'yon ng, ng ng kanyang income, right? Let's look at others, no? Halimbawa, uh, Google, no? Look at Google. Ang Google kasi there was a time ang ang, ang Google ang kanyang ang kanyang uh, ang price to book na sa 10 times, no? O tingnan natin ngayon kung anong Google, no? Financial key stats ang kanyang uh, PB ngayon ay 7.8 so 8 no uh, there was a time na 10 pa yan no so 8 times so ibig sabihin uh, you are actually paying uh, times 8 doon sa kanyang book value hindi mo masasabing mahal yun kasi nga software yan eh di ba ngayon if you are looking at a company lalo na may mga company na property sector no tapos ang kanyang PB ay less than 1 pa less than 1 Makakita ka ng ganyan. May gawar there was a time nag 0.5 lang. no Pero pag bumili ka, may ang konti, kita mo tataas na yung value ng uh, uh, kanyang uh, company. Kasi nga, imagine you're paying 0.5 lang na price to book. Ibig sabihin lang kung bibili ka doon sa company, man, ba, oh, nag-walk in ka sa company, para bang yung, yung kanyang laptop na 30,000 niya binili, binibenta lang niya ng 15,000. Kaya nga ang tawag doon ay fire sale. 0.5 ang book value. So hanap kayo ng mga companies na mababa ang PB sa 1. Pero tingnan nyo rin, baka naman kaya mababa ang PB kasi palugi na yung company. So dapat may income, maganda yung price earnings, kahit papano, and then mababa yung book value, ang PB. Okay, so ganyan ang formula ng ano, market price per share divided by the book value which is asset minus liabilities. And then ito yung final na indicators that really matter, yung price to sales kaya importante itong price to sales. Tanggalin ko lang wala na namang tao sa atin. Ang price to sales kasi, ito is a metric that I use in order to find out whether there is actual sales going on in the company. No? Kung tinignan ito nung mga nag-invest dati sa, e, sa, sa uh, ano ba itong company na ito, uh, na Enron no Enron sasabihin ko sana eh ito ni eh. Enron Enron company no uh, from the movie uh, may kita mo yung movie na na about Enron yung uh, the, the the wise guys in the world the room ba the, the intelligent the most intelligent guys in the room parang uh, uh, anyway so share ko sa inyo yung movie na yan no? uh, so yung Enron kasi nagbubuk sila ng income pero kung titingnan mo wala naman sila nako kinikitang sales no so uh, they were allowed to do that because this was the time before the uh, surveillance oxley act uh, parang ito yung time na yung uh, accounting reporting is too loose uh, na hindi nila pinapakailaman yon no pwede kang mag-accrue ng income e ang ina-accrue nilang income dito ang alam ko ha yung energy kasi to eh no is yung mga pinadayo nila ng mga planta sa India na eventually hindi nagmaterialize. So pa, parang ang nagkano sa kanila diyan is isang uh, isang uh, uh, reporter na tinanong siya kasi nga parang alam mo yung the emperor has new clothes. The emperor's new clothes, 'di ba? Actually, dinugoyo sila ng Enron, no? Parang sa sabi nila may income pero ang tanong ng babae, you know, I could not understand how how are you earning eh, in the first place, wala namang sales. O, eh, ba paano kung eventually hindi naman nag-materialize yung mga pinaproject nyo yan, di ba? Kasi lumalabas, nagpaproject sila ng, ng nag-aakpo sila ng income on something na hindi pa nangyayari. And they were allowed to do that for many years. In fact, Enron is considered ano, for six, ata, ano, six consecutive years most admired company sa Google no search niyo yan most admired company siya and then pataas na pataas yung presyo niya no sa stocks and then bumulusok because wala namang real income so eto this prevents that kasi wala na palang real sales kasi ang price to sales compare compares this ratio compares the 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 price 
to the sales to the sales of the company. So pag mababa ang sales niya, 'di ba? Ibig sabihin lang yung price to sales mo eh masyado mataas, right? So kailangan mataas ang sales mo para mababa yung price to sales. So in short, 'di ba? Ang price to sales kailangan the lower the better. Price to book, the lower the better. Ang price to earnings, the lower the better. Yan. So ganyan yan, revenue per share. So yun, yun lang po ang ating uh, topic today. Uh, it talks about the indicators that really matter. Yung kanina sinabi ko, no? yung mga profitability ratios, higher the better. Liquidity ratios, uh, wala tayong liquidity ratios pala. At solvency ratios, the lower the better. And then, of course, yung mga return, return on assets, so, you know, uh, uh, yun, again, higher the better yung return on assets. Kailangan pag banko, 1.5%. And then the three indicators that matter, price earnings, price sales, price to book, the lower the better. Pero para sa akin, yung price to book will just be parang tinitimisilip ka lang, baka mayroon dyang less than one. <coughs> parang ganun, mga sobrang discount. Pero pag 2 or 3, ang price to book niya masyadong mataas. Okay lang. Ang price to sales, basat lang so wag sobrang taas ang price to sales. No? Uh, may kita mo naman, eh. example, si Google ang price to sales niya ngayon, 8.55. Pero mayroon mo sales, right? Ngayon, uh, i-compare mo yan sa kanyang industry, pag masyadong mataas naman siya, ang price to sales niya, eh, may problema yun. Diba? Eh, ma ang maapektuhan dyan yung kanyang margin. Kaya masyadong mataas yung kanyang price versus the sales. Kasi nga, yung sales niya, masyadong mababa compared sa price. And therefore, yung income niya, di ba ang sales galing, yung gawa ng uh, ang earnings ay galing sa sales. Right? Eh kung yung margin mo mababa, therefore, mababa lalo yung income mo. Di ba? So, yun yung mga concerns dyan. Eh. Pero pag mataas naman ang margin mo, kahit mababa ang sales mo, parang, at least kahit mo parang nag-even nag out. So, all of these things are what we look for whenever we look at the company and uh, how profitable it is, they are and how good it is to invest in them. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. And if you have questions, just leave your questions here. Bye.